Lore Listening Library, Volume 16, Stardew Valley Lost Library Books. Tips on Farming. Use fertilizer to improve quality, reduce workload, or hasten crop growth. Fruit trees take a whole season to grow, but they require very little maintenance. Keep the area directly around your new sapling clear, or else it may not grow properly. Crops will die as soon as the season ends, unless they grow for multiple seasons, e.g. corn. Some crops, such as kale and wheat, need to be harvested with the scythe. This book is by Marnie. Animals are very sensitive. They like to be pet every day and prefer to eat grass outdoors than dry hay. They don't like being outside in the rain though. Happy animals produce higher quality products. On foraging. The local woods and mountains are great places to find wild produce. A good forager will clear out any weeds, stumps, or stones from these areas, so the wild produce has plenty of space to grow. Expert foragers know the secret to cultivating wild food so they can be grown on the farm. Isn't that amazing? The Fisherman, Act 1. Text. Gordy, how do you catch so many fish? For me, it takes forever. Gordy. You must take the choice to become a true fisherman, and over time your fishing speed will increase. Tex. So you're saying that improving my fishing skill will make me fish faster? Gordy. Correct. One day you may even learn the secret of creating your very own bobbers, improving your mastery even more. Now, be gone! How deep do the mines go? This question has been pondered by many Stardew Valley explorers over the years. The truth is, no one really knows, or at least they aren't telling anyone. Unfortunately, many of those who venture deep into the mines never return. However, there have been a few bold adventurers who have traveled deep into the mines and have resurfaced with interesting reports. Apparently, there are three distinct areas in the mine each with unique monsters and treasures. Some adventurers speak of gigantic underground lakes and strange creatures, but none of these claims have been proven. An Old Farmer's Journal I've been here for about a year now and I've started to make friends with the local townspeople. It sure feels great. They're sending me gifts and secret family recipes in the mail too. That's really helpful. Scarecrows. Once you start growing a lot of crops on your farm, you can expect to be visited by crows. In the morning, you might discover that a crow has made breakfast out of your hard work. One way to prevent these bothersome crows from eating your crops is to set up scarecrows next to your crops. Be aware that scarecrows have limited range, so you'll need multiple if your farm is large. Scarecrows keep track of how many crows they've diverted, you can use that to tell they're in a useful spot. Collectible scarecrows aren't just for looks. They work just the same as the regular mode. The Secret of the Star Drop For thousands of years, people have been intrigued by the mysterious power from the star drop. But no one knows where they come from. Professor R.J. Cutler, a leading researcher on strange fruit, says this. We've discovered traces of genetic material on meteorites that closely resemble the star drop, but it's not a proven match. Regardless of where they come from, this peculiar fruit is said to be uncommonly delicious, and some even claim they grant special power to those who eat them. Journey of the Prairie King, the smash hit video game. Did you know? Anyone who beats Journey of the Prairie King is automatically entered into a drawing for a prize? Did you know? The developer has stated that the protagonist is based on a real-life character, a true cowboy hero from the Prairie Island in the Gem Sea. A study on diamond yields. After years of research in the mines, I believe I've learned something about diamond frequency. My research involved only these stones that are scattered about the mines. 
and ones that are broken with a pickaxe. Mineral yields from other sources require more research. Diamonds seem to only form at mine level 50 or greater. At level 50, approximately 1 in 500 stones will be diamond rich. After level 50, the frequency of diamond formation seems to increase at about 0 0.000016 per level. Quite a rare gem. M. Jasper Brewmaster's Guide Ah, to brew. The rich smell of yeast wafting through a cedar loft. The floral overtones of freshly cut hops on a winter's eve. But I digress. You are probably more interested in the practical side of brewing. To brew, you will need a keg. I leave it up to you to devise blueprints for a keg. Kegs can be used to make several kinds of products. If vegetables are placed inside, the keg will produce juice. Juice takes the least amount of time to brew. If wheat is placed in the keg, it will produce beer. Beer takes a while to brew, but it is quite profitable. Placing hops in a keg will produce the beloved pale ale. Place fruit in the keg to make wine. Wine takes the longest of all to make, but a wine made from the finest fruit is worth quite a bit. Be patient with your keg. You'll know it's finished when it's perfectly still, and only drink in moderation or you'll surely regret it. Mysteries of the Dwarves The dwarves call themselves Smoluanu, which translates to Sky People. An odd name for a group that lives deep underground, isn't it? Another mystery of the dwarves is the advanced technology they supposedly possess. Evidence such as this led me, despite the ridicule of my colleagues, to propose a new theory. I believe the dwarves are the remnants of a once advanced civilization whose interplanetary vehicle crashed on this planet long ago. I propose that this dwarves spaceship bore down, deep underground. And, over time, the dwarves became adapted to their new underground environment. My colleagues ask, why didn't they come above ground and live on the surface? Perhaps their old planet had a thicker atmosphere that protected them from stellar radiation, and they simply could not survive in our sunlight. That would explain why they only surface at night to take what they need from our houses. M. Jasper Highlights from the Book of Yoba Before time, there was only the endless golden light. The light called out to itself, Yoba. Yoba wanted more. Yoba swirled the golden light into a vortex. Yoba swirled and swirled until a hole formed in the eye of the vortex. From this hole sprung a seed. Yoba smoothed the golden light. Yoba smoothed and smoothed, and the light became soil. In the soil, Yoba planted the seed. The seed sprouted, and behold, a vine struck skyward, twisting and probing, casting a writhing shadow onto the golden void. After eleven days, the vine bore fruit. Yoba, with knowing wisdom, peeled the tough skin of the fruit and saw that the world was inside. And so that is how the world came to be. Marriage Guide for Farmers Before you ask someone to marry you, you'll have to date them for a while first. Ask someone to date you with a bouquet from Pierre's. When you're ready to pop the big question, you'll need to give them a mermaid's pendant. Everyone knows what it means when you present them with one of those. It's rumored that on stormy days, the ghost of an old mariner appears in Stardew Valley, clutching just such a pendant. After the wedding ceremony, your partner will move in with you. Remember to treat your spouse well. They still like gifts, even after marriage. Paid for by Pierre. The Fisherman, Act 2. Tex. Gordy, tell me your best fisherman story. Gordy. <sighs> I've caught a lot of big fish in my time. Some of them are very rare and difficult. But there was one that I struggled to catch for three days and three nights. I call this fish the legend. He was a huge beast, and the harder I tugged on the line, the harder he tugged back. 
I let my guard down for a moment, and he snapped my boat in two. I've never fished since. Tex, do you think anyone will ever catch him? Gordy, hmm. If this person were a master at fishing and caught all other rare fish first and made sure they ate the correct kind of food, then maybe. Above all, you've got to have respect for the water, son. Tex. The son? You mean your f father? Gordy. Yes, my boy. Dramatic music as the curtain falls. Technology Report The blueprints for an advanced piece of machinery called a crystallarium have recently been published. This machine can grow crystals from almost nothing, providing their owners with endless supplies of valuable gems. Here's how it works. Place a gem of your choice inside the crystallarium. Now be patient. It can take up to several days, but eventually the crystallarium will grow a copy of whatever you've placed inside. You'll know it's ready when it stops wiggling. Once you remove your gem, the crystallarium will start working on yet another clone. You'll never need to restock it unless you want to change the kind of gem it produces. Unfortunately, the crystallarium doesn't work with the extremely rare gemstone known as Prismatic Shard. For some reason, the EMF from the shard interacts negatively with the crystallarium. Secrets of the Legendary Fish Fishermen speak of five rare and unique fish that can only be caught by skilled anglers. Once caught, they will never appear again. The crimson fish lives in the warm ocean waters of summer. It's been sighted on the far eastern side of the beach. The glacier fish, which only appears in winter, can only be caught on the southern tip of Arrowhead Island in Cedar Sap Forest near where the river meets the ocean. The angler fish has been spotted in fall, north of town where the river flows down from the mountains. There's a rumor of a strange, twisted fish that lives in the sewer. The final fish, a species never caught before, is simply known as legend. It is rumored that he lives in a log submerged in the mountain lake and only ventures out on rainy spring days to nibble on frogs' eggs. Only the most skilled fishermen could hope to catch this one. Train at fishing and be persistent, and eventually you will catch these elusive fish. Make sure to respect the water and don't remove too many fish from the ecosystem. Saw something weird in the tunnel leading out of Pelican Town. There's a little door hidden in the dark. Couldn't open it though, Gunther. Note from Gunther. Wow, this library has become great thanks to your help. Thanks a bunch. Goblins by M. Jasper. These species, commonly known as goblin, seem to have originated in the forests of the far northeast, beyond the Blue Mire Hills. Characterized by their green skin, bright red eyes, and foul smell, initial encounters with goblins can be frightening for unexpected travelers. Despite their unsettling appearance, goblins possess an intellect and emotional capacity akin to humans, and have no trouble learning our customs and languages. The goblins I've met so far have been rather friendly and amiable, once I've shown that I mean no harm. Unfortunately, centuries of distrust and ill treatment from humans has led many goblins to pursue careers in the employment of witches, warlocks, necromancers, and other unsavory types. The traditional goblin diet consists of grub meat, typically from the large and juicy grub varieties native to the goblin home forest. On special occasions, goblins will indulge in an item called void mayonnaise, considered perhaps the finest delicacy in all goblin cuisine. Salak Ulan Pa Ino Ra Kodo Ulan Kodo Ulan Mabu Bel Ino Ra Teba Omi Walu Nemo Dab Ulan Kodo Kui Mabu Awa Yoba Omi Salok Awa lone omi omi nimo, 
Salok Tiba Ra Awa Nimo Gawa Eno Bel Ulan Nimo Taba Omi Yoba Bel Omi Z. And that concludes this volume of Lore Listening Library. Be sure to let me know in the comments about in the comments down below if there's any video game lore you'd like to hear. In the meantime, next week we will be opening the volume on Fire Emblem Three Houses. Until next time.